All right, dope. What is up? Welcome back to another episode of It's All Bad. Hello, I'm hello. Ru- I'm Russian Danny. I'm here with... Hey, I'm Keith. Hey, it's Mike. We got Charlie in the cut. What's up? Uh, man, that... This is a cool episode. It it's was cool a good one. It, yeah. It's cool because it's not like, you know, it wasn't all like fucking PCP and fucking, but it was, it was cool. No, I was fucking riveted. Yeah. I was riveted. And clear, clearly, uh, our man Jack has had, you know, he wilded. Oh, yeah. It's just so fascinating how the ages of when he wilded. You're like, there's almost a certain discipline to that. You're like, really? You just wilded between like 14 and 18? Like, yeah. and that, you know, like 14 and 18, basically. Yeah, but when you have that kind of money, you can get a lot done. Yeah. You know, you can, <laughs> no, no, clearly he did. No he learning did his curve work. When you yeah. have that kind oh, of yeah. Pro- when people are getting you fucked up because of who yeah. you are and shit. Yeah. 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 We have Jack Osborne tonight on the show and uh, today, tonight. Whatever it is. Yeah. We try that again. That no, doesn't matter. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And Portal uh, to Hell is the show, right? Portal to Hell. Yeah. His show yeah. is called Portal to Hell. Um, he's done some other ghost hunting stuff and he's funny uh, and shit. He's funny great. as hell and yeah. we got some great ghost stories got some great drug stories and bad behavior <laughs> stories but mostly uh just uh, a very good interesting perspective yeah. i really like his i like his vibe yeah so without further ado here we go uh, here we go <laughs> It's just like every over underpass, overpass. It's just Ted City. That's yeah. amazing. It's fucking nuts. Yeah. Dark yeah. cities. Dark cities. <laughs> um, welcome back, right. everybody. Welcome back. Yeah. Charlie, how uh, you doing? Good. That's good. <laughs> it's good. Did you get the coronavirus? Rush. Yeah. Are you are you COVID nineteen? Danny? No. no. I'm no. good. I survived Chernobyl. I ain't worried about shit. <laughs> 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 That's true, huh? Yeah. Wait, what? You were a Chernobyl baby? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really? I was born six months before Chernobyl happened in Kiev. Holy shit. Yeah. You're a straight Chernobyl baby. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I am. Wow. Born. And Jack knew this day was coming. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> avid watcher of Doomsday Preface. Yeah. I could see the writing on the wall. <laughs> Mike? Hi. Did you get coronavirus? Not, I don't believe so. What about Modelo? I'm virus? so terrified right the now. Modelo virus, uh, yeah. The Modelo virus. The Modelo. I am. I'm, I can't. I can't lie. I, I have a <laughs> fair amount of OCD, and right now it is. It is engaging. Yes. Uh, and uh, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I can take 120 milligrams of Prozac just like <laughs> double <laughs> and see what that does to your boy. Yeah. But I think I, I I've I've been up to 100, and it's not. That's cute. I'm sort of. I'm sort of. Uh, I glow. What happens if you boof them? <laughs> is that Dude. up in the up in the in the bottom stairs? Yeah, that's, take, yeah. take the back stairs. Yeah, um, interesting. You should ask. We might be able to help Jack with a little cold remedy. Oh Maybe. yeah, you want to yeah. tell him? Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> you, you boof your cold medicine? No, no. Even Garlic. Gar- oh yeah. Garlic clove up your up your butt. Yeah. <laughs> no way. Yeah. Whole clove. Whole clove. Up Spread the it out overnight. Yeah, and you're Dude. good to go. Bam, you're back the next day. Well, have you? And you've done this? No, no. I've thought about doing it. <laughs> but he knows the two girls. I know two girls it. and you a dude him. that has done it. Yeah. Do they do it together? Do they? Do they help each no. other? Like get it going. <laughs> <laughs> Little round robin. <rock. laughs> <laughs> I'll boof your garlic clove for you if you boof mine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's like a, like those chain monkeys your kids have. <laughs> Everybody bugging. It's like hold on one second. <laughs> right about now, I'd boof about sixty-four ounces of Purell if anybody, <laughs> if anybody could get, and I'd pay about two hundred fifty bucks for it if anybody's out there listening. I've got a handy little uh, little oh, driver yeah. right here. Oh, shit. There you there go. go. Oh, shit. Race ya. Mm. No, I think you know a lot of things. Like in LA, I don't know if you guys notice this, but like at work, I notice like a. I, I, whenever I, like a lot, you know, because I work a lot of time, I'm in a Target bathroom or you know, like a motorhome bathroom. But even when I'm at work at the motorhome bathroom, the like when it, I'm waiting for the bathroom, I'll hear the toilet flush, and I literally go like one one thousand, two one thousand, three, you know, to try to see if they're washing their hands. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nope. A lot of times they're not. Man. No, no dude. nasty motherfucker. Nasty. You know, what's weird is like. The more time sober that I have, like the more of like a weird germaphobe. Like I won't touch a bathroom door, even here right now, walking out. I fucking use a paper towel. Yeah, me too. To, to do the door. 
Yeah. Oh. It's, and this is coming from a guy that used to like, you know, shoot up a shoot toilet. Shoot up water. yeah, with you know, not out of the back of the toilet. Not yeah. like, you know, yeah. yeah. Okay, well that's yeah. you know, at least yeah. I'm water. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean it's cleaner than the actual toilet bowl. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think I told you this this is weird thing in in um in prison, like you don't like when you br- br- brush your teeth, you you don't spit in the sink. Mm-mm. You always spit in the toilet, right? But um, we were in Old Folsom. It was super hot. And my friend was. Can I ask why? Just real quick for the people at home. Well, you just don't do it because it's dirt. Like if I brush my, you know, if I brush my teeth, I'm spitting in there, and then Charlie might want to come shave or something like that. Got it. Got uh-huh. it. You know got what it. I mean? You don't yeah, want yeah. your spit in it, so it's right. just common courtesy, kind of. But yeah, yeah. but the toilet, but also there's stainless steel, the toilets and the sinks, and um. But, you know, you like if, if you're shaving your head or, or like if you're shaving, you'll do it in the sink. But if you're shaving your head, you'll do it in the toilet. Yeah. You know. Okay. In, uh, Using the toilet water? Yeah. Uh. It's extremely clean, believe it or not, because it's stainless steel and you keep everything immaculate. Mm-hmm. You know, you're uh, constantly cleaning. Things. How long were you at Old Folsom? I was, I was only at Old Folsom about seven months. Okay. But there, I'm trying to think. I think even the more modern prisons I've been to. Uh, Corcoran, Pelican Bay, Delano, they all have like uh, steel toilets as well. How many prisons have you been to? I've been to a lot, but it's not a lot of time. I've only done about five years. Okay. But the thing is, you like, so you go to a reception center, right? Mm-hmm. When you get there, that's like classification. So now they're trying to figure out where everybody goes. Like, yeah. Okay. Like they'll call the name, right? Like Fiala, you know, Vacaville, fucking Osborne, Old Folsom. You know, they call it over the thing. Yeah. Hey, notice how Keith just skipped over me because there's no way he's going to yeah. get my last name right. Karunji, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you're like, they call it and, it's, and you get sent. They, they really just kind of send you wherever you have. Yeah, with a space. There's space. Yeah. You know, at the time. In the nineties, when I was going, I we really, we really genuinely well, I was thought going. <laughs> but we you talk about it like you were in a movie club. Or- no, but we really thought, you know, like it was. We really thought like they're going to send us to the place that's best for us. Bullshit, <laughs> you know. Like there's only one place that's good. That's Donovan. I've never been there. Isn't like Pelican Bay like crazy Supermax? Yeah, it's it's awful. Yeah. But it's but I was only I, I was on the four B yard, which is fucking bananas. Mm-hmm. But the shoe is there, which is all like one man sells, but. There's two level four yards, which will be the next worst thing. Okay. And one, the four A yard is pieces of shit. It's all like uh, uh, sex predators, you know. Um, yeah. And, uh, Weinsteins. Yeah, that kind of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and child molesters. Okay. Same shit. Yeah. Predators. But also, uh, and then rats, you know, which they go to that four A yards like that. But four B is everybody getting out of the shoe. So all the politics are happening. Because mm. some dude's been in a fucking shoe turn for two years and he gets dropped out on that yard by the time he gets there he already knows fucking karunji's a problem blah 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 blah. yeah so luckily it got slammed a lot you know you got we, we get locked down a lot so you're not out that long so if you can make it like the one time it was like 45 minutes hmm. and then they'll slam you for three days wow most i remember being out on that yard was about two days Wow. Without somebody, not not really getting killed, but people getting stabbed, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all like, you know, it's weird. It's a tit for tat thing. Like, so Danny owes Charlie money for heroin or something, right? Mm-hmm. And he keeps sweating him. And then he doesn't pay, so Charlie books him, right? Yeah. Well, then fucking, you know what I mean? It's just weird yeah. political shit that happens. It's totally. It's just like, terrible. it's like a high school on really exactly bad, like, like, LSD acid combo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can throw some meth in there, yeah. just fucking... Get it all crazy. Yeah, it's exactly <laughs> like that. It's exactly fucking yeah. like that. The drama is exactly the same. Even to where at some points, you know, you're sitting there like, are we like we're grown men doing this. You know what I mean? Like talking about who didn't make their bed correctly. Is, should we fuck them up? You know, like um how old were you the first time you got hijacked? Uh, let's see. I was fourteen. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was fourteen years old. The and what what age. was it? Um, I it, it was the kind of classic, like just smoke some pot. Yeah, yeah. Went That's to a friend's like house. Me, yeah. yeah, played uh Tony Hawk Pro Skater, um, <laughs> play, <laughs> PlayStation One. <laughs> These kids out there, there's, there was a PlayStation One at one point. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I did a I did a gravity bong. Your oh, first time, yeah. first time, fuck, yeah, bold so, move, real yeah. bold. Yeah, that's a, a grav that's a, bong. First time you ever got high, the grav bong. That is, I mean, I'd have some pause with a grav bong. I'm a fifty year old man. That kid is not to be trifled with. <laughs> fuck, yeah. Man. I have a friend. Just very quickly, I have a friend who that's his 
preferred way of doing it. And we went to Las Vegas and he and we got this suite and he's fiddling. And I'm like, hey, you want to make we're going to make some drinks. Let's make some drinks. And he's over there fiddling around. And I'm like, he's not making drinks. What the fuck is he doing over there? He's filling up the sink in the bar area no and the thing with what I'm like. What are you doing? Gets out this thing. He's like, brought my grab bong with me. And he had a cut. He had like a milk, bo- uh, you know, a gallon of milk. And he's got that. And then like another two liter that he had rigged with some tape. And I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, get some of this. And I did. And it fucking destroyed me. Yeah. It was yeah, not, yeah, yeah. No I had like instant paranoia. Like oh, instant. Jesus. I was like on the couch, like. This is bad. This is bad. That's mm. like that's what pot does to me, man. Yeah. I fucking hate. I can't handle it. Yeah, you know. Like, and did you find like what was? A, but that did that open kind of a. No, it was that. I think it was that classic like rebellious teen curiosity. I came, you know, obviously family long history of it, and I just kind of thought like that's what you. That's what adults do to have fun. Right. And I just wanted to be an adult, so I was yeah. like, all right, smoke pot, and then I started drinking and. And it just, you know, and then pills and yeah, it's just the whole thing. Yeah, you went deep on the pills. Right? I did. I went deep. I went deep quick. I was like, I was, I was swinging hard in the heyday of oxycotton. So it was. It was, yeah. uh, it was kind of a weird thing because you were fucking young taking yeah. them, and that's the first time. Like I, I was like, God damn, he's young. You know, to be doing opiates, that's fucking yeah. young. Uh, yeah, it because I'm kind of terrified of fucking opiates myself. Yeah. You know, it's dude, it's gnarly, man. And I watched that documentary, The Pharmacist, and like. Amazing. Rarely ever will I watch anything and get kind of triggered by it. Yeah. And I was watching it and I, I but I got like angry triggered because I was like, fuck those fucking pharmaceutical yeah. assholes. Like yeah. they did this. Yeah. Like, fuck you. Yeah. I felt like a victim. Yeah. You you are a victim. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. It's like it is fucking like and I'm not like a big conspiracy theorist, but I'm like, nobody's fucking done any, you know, like you've been sober a long time. It's like nobody's done. And I'd say you're like from that first grouping of oxys, yeah. you know, whenever that was 18, 15 years ago. It's like still nobody's done anything to fucking stop it. No. And meanwhile, everybody's a fucking junkie now. Yeah. They're Dying. either sober, dead, or a junkie. Yeah. That's it. And it's it's funny. I used to think like early on, like in the first like five years, I'd be like, oh, everyone always talks about everyone dying, everyone dying. I'm like, you know, maybe once a year, someone in the rooms you'll hear about like, oh, you know, Chad, yeah, he yeah. drove drunk into a, you know, ravine. Like, and you're like, oh man, that sucks. But now it's like, Every like uh, three people in the last few months I've known, yeah, dead because of drugs. Oh yeah, they they drop now. I mean, I hate to say this, but it's like now it's like I hear it and I'm like, you know, you're not even shocked anymore. Yeah. You know, it used to be like, damn, that sucks. Yeah. Now mm-hmm. you're like, oh, it, you know, I'm surprised that so and so went before so and so. Totally, that's about yeah. it. Yeah. And, and they don't right. fucking last long. Like that shit the, with the fentanyl. It's like yeah. they go out and two days later they're fucking dead. It's Done. not like Or anything. the first one. Yeah. Or the yeah. first, you know, motherfuckers. Because that's the thing that a lot of people don't realize is like it, like people go into sober living or rehab or whatever, you know, and then they get that like, oh, I just want to get a little high. Yeah. I mean, just a little. Yeah. And then they go out, but they're not taking into account that now they've been in detox for however long or they've been in rehab or they've been sober. And they want to do the same amount that they do, or even maybe a little less, you know, yeah. but also, or if they've been, whatever, you know, they don't realize that it's fucking fentanyl that they're getting instead of dope, you know, yeah. and they do a little bit of it. And that's when a lot of people die is from that one, not knowing their tolerance, not knowing I, the- someone, someone, you know, kind of in the, the not my circle, but someone I, I, I know a guy who's friend's yeah. wife um she apparently relapsed on uh was, went to go buy zambas bought his five zambas yeah it was fentanyl no made way. to look like zambas oh, took God. it done dead yeah it's weird i was in vancouver and fucking um remember jason yeah. was telling us that this couple uh smoked a, so apparently in vancouver like th- this guy uh sean he had relapsed he said you can't even get heroin it's literally just fentanyl is what it is yeah but they were telling us that remember he told us that somebody smoked a joint that was laced with fentanyl, killed both of them. Yeah, guys, it's, can we pause? I'm sorry. Can I? Can we pause for one second? It's my dad who's in a yeah. He, he's in a nursing home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, they are assisted living, it's, oh, right. but it's assisted yeah. living and nursing home. Yeah. And even though they're in lockdown, I'm just nervous because totally because my but, you have just, healthcare professionals coming in and out. Yeah. You know, You're like who the hell are they hanging out with? Like, who are they hanging? You know? Like yeah. it's like the people who work there have families and who friends and friends who have friends and friends. And yeah, so. I'm going through the same shit because my dad's been sick and he's like he's got see, I mean he's got like a lung issue and he had fucked up his neck and he's got Parkinson's and he has these nurses that rotate out every yeah. And I'm like, 
well, where the fuck are they going when they leave here? Are yeah. they like licking doorknobs? Like what? <laughs> <laughs> like how do we know? So he has CNAs basically, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. My yeah. dad had CNAs at home, and and he finally was like, it's he's so not gonna fucking, fucking do that tour, is he? Fuck no, dude. Oh, thank God. No, I thought yeah, you no, he canceled it. No, he he canceled it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's just too. It's too. Um, That's too much, man. Yeah, it's like you know what? Like he should be allowed to recover in his own time yeah. without this looming thing of like, gotta go on the road, bro. Gotta go on the yeah. road. Like, I think it's he has such a weird fan pressure, and he wants to keep everybody happy because it ain't for the fucking money at this no. point. It's just like fuck the people need me. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know what I mean? it, it actually goes, it, it's literally like how he was raised, though. It's like yeah. a full working class family. Like you say you're gonna do something, you show up 15 minutes early, yeah. you do your fucking job the best you can, and then you go home. Yeah, it's like so. It the fact that he's had to like go, I can't do this right now. It's heartbreaking him because yeah. it's going against everything that he was ever taught. Yeah. So it's really, a, yeah. And it's like, when you've done that, like, because you were saying the other night that you, like, because you, you grew up on the road just traveling. It's like, all oh, that fucking, tra- and you know, you're probably, you're just in that thing where you, he probably gets like, I want to get out of the house. <laughs> you know, you're just He doesn't know to- how to sit still. Yeah. He does not, he like, the longest he ever didn't tour was his my entire life has been 18 months he literally goes crazy <laughs> Holy shit. that's the longest that's the longest he's ever stayed off the road and or i should say stayed off the road or not done an album like yeah he has that was like, like was not a, working yeah there was an 18 month period in like 93 okay to 94 he didn't do anything oh Shit. Yeah, for a long, long, long vacation. <laughs> yeah, but he just forty-eight year career. <laughs> just went, like he's got a good feet. vacation yeah. style. Like usually, I do. Most people take two weeks a year. Yeah, I go. I go twenty years straight of work. <laughs> and then I just take eighteen months off, and I catch up. It's like well, okay, yeah. I bank that vacation I time. Bank <laughs> that time. Yeah, uh, it's like firefighters. They'll just be yeah, like, oh, no, yeah. I'll, work, I'll work straight through, and then I'll take yeah, three months move. off. Move, <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's all. Awesome. I've always been envious of the firefighters because you know they work like is it two or three days straight, and then have five off. Yeah. really? Like, yeah, you've been envious of them, dude. It's kind of great. Yeah, until the shit hits the fan. Yeah, until the Corona hits you. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. awesome. Until, it's all chilly and fucking reruns. Yeah, until <laughs> there's a fire, <laughs> <laughs> and then you gotta go there. Yeah, yeah. no. When people are running away from it. You gotta be yeah. like, all right, guys. <laughs> Dude, on that vacation time. Oh, God. I can't. Uh, I was. I fucking. Uh, I did this commercial with Steve Miokic. You know that the UFC fighter. Yeah. And who's the fucking nicest guy in the world? But he's a volunteer fighter and mm-hmm. has been for twenty years or something. And uh, so I was dressing him in this. You know, it was a fake fire and shit. But I was like, you know, he's a big dude, and we dress him in this shit. And I'm like, this fucking dude's like, you know, fighting like gnarly heavyweights in the UFC. And then fighting fucking fires in like central Ohio, yeah. where it's humid as fuck. Like wearing that shit, it is awful. Dude. He, but yeah, it's great abs. Yeah, <laughs> sick shredded abs. Yeah. Sexy you, cauliflower. When yeah. you think about it, back, like you know, I don't know how, if how much you've heard the show or 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 what, but you know, there's usually we have kind of there's obviously a, a comic theme that goes through it, right? Like yeah. we're telling. When you think back, do you ever think back on stuff and be like, Jesus, that's hilarious in retrospect that I made it through? I think it's like hilariously fucked up. Right. Because like, yeah. like I because I, I was I, I spoke spoke to me the other day and I was talking about how I um I was six fifteen, sixteen, seventeen years old at all the bars in Hollywood drinking. Like if I went out yeah. on a Saturday night with my friends, but nobody knew who you were, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, Jesus, that's criminal. Yeah, fully. And I'm like, dude, if I saw a 16 year old kid slamming shots of tequila yeah. at a bar, yeah. I'd be like, what in the fuck has gone yeah. on with this planet? Especially when you knew who his parents were. You know, you could yeah. be like, hey, could somebody? That is fucking weird. But you were saying crazy. that the other You're night, famous. and I, I didn't dawn on me, but I was like. That's because I, you know, I just assumed you were like, you know, being like every sneaking off and getting fucked no, up. But dude, no, I was no. like out in the open, That's like it was fucking. Bananas. But that was like, how old are you? Uh, how old am I now? Yeah. Uh, I'm 34. All right, so I'm 34, 85. Yep. Yeah. All right. Good. Yeah. Was, yeah, yeah go. man. <laughs> <laughs> all those but like, there was because I could so same shit. Ho- Teddy's, you yeah, know, where yeah. like Teddy's was known. For letting, if you were underage and you wanted to fucking party, that's where you would go. Yep. And then all those places like Cinespace, yep. fucking LAX Sundays. Like there was like a, a circuit of the, yeah, uh huh, Joe, fuck, Joseph. That place is still there. Yeah. 
It's crazy. This after hours fucking uh, it's after hour. It's a Greek restaurant during the day. Which if you ever want Greek food, don't go to fucking <laughs> Joe's. Yeah. You know but also in after hours. You want to know the weirdest? I don't know what the story is. It's weird because I know that's like a hot or was a hot bar for a long yeah. time. But we always rented. You know, it's by Galpin, right next to Galpin. So that's a place we rent the trucks for production. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And dude, I used to eat breakfast there two or three times a week for years, and it was actually good. It was never a bar at the time. It's like. 99, okay. 2000. Like on Kawanga. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But all of a sudden, like one day there's like this weird remodel <laughs> and it was just this fucking like, and when I was driving by there at night, I'm like, why the fuck are all, I thought they were galping. You know, you'd never be at fucking Joseph's <laughs> and for whatever fucking reason, it turned into some crazy nightclub. Yeah. That was, it was banana. Was yeah, Joseph's, yeah. fuck, yeah. Did you I ever can't... go to, did you ever go to XS? No. This, okay, think... XS was like 2001 and it was this huge nightclub on Highland and Melrose. And it was like, I mean, it was pure debauchery. There was yeah. even like a sex dungeon there. No way. Yeah, there was like a full on like S&M dungeon room at this nightclub. <laughs> Dude, it was wild. Like, Were you the only kid, Jack? Or was there other like? There was a small like cluster of like these Hollywood kids. Yeah, okay. That could get, I, I was definitely the youngest by yeah. like, probably by a good three years. They were at least 18. Yeah. Maybe like 15, 16. Just, <laughs> Make, making out with girls and getting wasted. Awesome. It's the golden years. That's amazing. Yeah. But it's Fuck. fucked up, though. Like, yeah. you're like, I'm as a child. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. Yeah. It is. It, I'm sure, like, looking back at it now, you as a dad, you're like, what the fuck? Oh, my know? God, totally. And, yeah. it, and it was one of those things where... My, you know, my mom during this time period, she was dealing with cancer. So yeah. she like her energy, rightfully so, was on, on her own well-being. Sure. And my dad was because she was suffering, you know, doing really struggling with cancer was just like getting wasted himself. So I was really had no parental, uh, you know, y- unit oh, anywhere yeah. near me. Mm. And I had a shit ton of money from MTV. Yeah. And just a bunch of skater friends. And I was like, all right, let's just have fun. Yeah. I Dude, I can't even imagine. But it's like, it's weird because like. I always think of your mom as they'll just conquer anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's, oh, we see. You know, you, totally. don't, you don't realize, like, that that lady's got to spend all of her time dealing with this while this dude's <laughs> <laughs> just like, out just blowing s- rails at Stealing her like, <laughs> meds and, God. you know. <laughs> How did the is that how you started with the opiates? We stealing them from somebody No, else? actually, I got I started on the opiates because I, I broke my elbow. Oh. Um, and classic, you know, the early 2000s doctor. Here, here's 90, you know, I think Norcos they gave me. And wow. I was like, sweet. And then that just kind of was like, whoa, these pills are good. And then like I met like shady doctors and they yeah. give me stuff, just like whatever. I actually had a doctor in New York who froze like 20,000 quaaludes in the 80s. No way. Straight up, dude. I had, what was it, the lemon two, uh, four, yeah. whatever. It was lemon something. Wow. Yeah, so I used to get, I, I, only a couple times, but I got a few quaaludes from him. Holy oh, shit. Oh, I yeah. hear they're wonderful. And dude, the craziest <laughs> shit. Here's the craziest thing. I'm at a nightclub in Hollywood, and I told my buddies, hey, dude, I got a quaalude. That rumor, like, flew around the bar <laughs> like fucking coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> and within, like, an hour, I had dudes coming up to me being like, hey, man, I heard you have quaaludes. Can I buy one? I'm like, no, I don't. Fuck <laughs> off. Like, it was so weird. Dude. And what is? What are they like? I'd never done one at home. And, and I haven't. It's before our time. Okay, so admittedly, when I took it, I was always drunk. So yeah. it, it just made me, like... I never took it like sober to really be able to quantify effects. like what this really is. I would just take it when I was fucked up and it just made me a whole lot more fucked up. Right. right. So Got that's it. the only thing I can really gauge it at is that it just really shot things over yeah. the hill. Quaaludes and fuck you up. Yeah. Got it. There you Understood. Yeah. I've yeah. never well, taken them. No, Somebody <laughs> told me a Mandrex was like a Quaalude. Yeah. Like it's I heard similar, that. Yes. But I haven't yeah. taken that either. Yeah. What um what's the uh what's the worst um well worst or funniest What's the worst drug experience you've ever had? Man, worst drug experience. You know, I think ultimately it was kind of an extended experience of just like the mental health problems as a result. Yeah. Like if I was going to say like it's the what like just having been so far removed from it now for a long time, it's like you realize like – how it genuinely is a mental health issue. Yeah. You know, and it's like, 100%. I, I, it really irks me when people are like, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's yeah. like, no, dude, is depression a choice? Yeah. Like it's, yes, it is a quote unquote disease, but like, 
I was so depressed and I was so suicidal at such yeah. a young age. And I like, that's what I look back at being like, that was just horrible. And it was just a direct result of just snorting a bunch of pills. Like, yeah, it's, it sucks, man. And I think it's, I don't know. It, it, it just, it bums me out that this has to be a thing, you know? Yeah. But also it doesn't cause it gave me the life that I have today. Yeah. So it's well, a double-edged sword. I always think that, cause it's very fascinating. Like you got sober. It was like less than two years after that, that you got really into the rock climbing and right. Yeah. Yeah. I you, got, I got sober at 17 and started climbing and adventuring at like 19. Yeah. Cause it was like, and it was a crazy fucking transition to watch. Cause yeah. you just, the weight just poured off of you yeah. and you got into shape. But I thought, I really like that because, like, when somebody's all of a sudden you're doing something that's great for your mental health, and you become kind of a mountain man, frankly. Yeah, you a know, little bit. Like, <laughs> especially for, like, because you're like a, he's like you, like a city fucking kid. Yeah. Like, he's grown up in the city, you know, like mean concrete. streets of Beverly Hills. Dude. <laughs> 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 <We'll> cut you. <laughs> You better stay away from little Santa Monica. But <laughs> well, you know what I mean? Like to be like a full like mountain Brent wood up to no good. Cause that you're doing that all the time now, right? I, not all the time. It's hard with kids. Like right. my, my kind of like adventure, like I might get one good climbing trip in a year or, you know, but I, I'm, I surf a lot. That's kind of my oh, thing cool. now. So I, you know, I've got my like adventure van with like a shower in it and beds. Oh, and, you do? Yeah. So I'll oh, like pop right. that down to the beach and, you know, just spend the night, wake up, surf early. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Like one of those, like the high top. Yeah. Ones, I got like right? the sprinter van that's I like fully converted. Things. Oh, yeah. Dude, they're awesome. They're I, the best. It's funny when I was getting it, everyone's like, dude, but you, how, how often are you going to use it? Man, I use that thing at least once or twice a week. That's great. Yeah. Wow. Fuck. It's my boogie van. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So wait, what, what, who, what led you to getting sober? So, you know, I was dealing, you know, my mom actually got better and, um, she received a phone call from a friend being like, Hey, Jack strung out on opiates. Oh, um, shit. it's really bad. One of your friends or one, hers? One of my friends. Okay. And my mom was kind of like, I don't know. I don't. And then she started kind of piecing it together because there were times when my mom you know, I'd come home all fucked up and my mom would be really worried, but she th- thought I was just maybe drunk. Yeah. And she would like, and I was a kid, so she would like come get into bed with me to just to make sure I wasn't going to puke in my sleep. And I was doing the full shallow breathing stuff. Like I was like, oh shit, I, I was getting the death breath, you know, yeah. that like really close. Like, cardiac yeah. Arrest. And so my mom would, she would wake me up in the night. She'd be like, wake up, wake up. Like you're, you're barely breathing. And I'd wake up and I'd be like, leave me alone kind of thing. Oh fuck. Um, and so I think, when her, my friend called her, it just kind of started piecing things together. And she was like, okay, this makes sense now. Right. Um, and so she approached me. Um, it was, uh, I can tell you specifically, it was April 18th, 2003. It was like, you're going to treatment. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, 2003. And I was like, yeah, yeah no. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I took off, disappeared for the weekend. And like, just, I mean, it was like a full blackout weekend. And I turned up. Uh, Easter Monday uh, on 420. Um, no way. Yeah. <laughs> and I just, I was like, I'm not getting sober before 420. Yeah. And so I came home f- uh, d- on 420 that evening and was like, okay, I think I should do this. Oh, really? Yeah. Because oh, I was, great. I like, I, it was actually this girl I was seeing at the time. It was like, you know, it couldn't hurt. Like no one, <laughs> no one has ever gone to treatment and come out worse, worse than when right. they went in. So like, worst case scenario, you go stay somewhere nice for a month and they feed you food and you don't get to do anything and you read some books and whatever. And I was like, okay. Yeah. Like if you're all right, lady, if you're saying that, I'll do it. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, 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 it stuck, man. Something just clicked. Yeah. It's know? great. Yeah. Yeah. The the one thing that I always like, because my, you know, same thing, like my mom really cared and whatever, but there's a, I feel like there's a, there's almost like a denial piece for parents where they don't yeah. want to believe that it's as bad as it right. is, you know? Yeah. Because there was nights where like my mom would come in to make sure that I came home. Like we were living up in Laurel Canyon and she would come in to make sure that I was home. And I would have like lines of fucking blow, like railed out on the coffee table next to me. And she never saw that, you know? Whoa. Yeah. And she never, just because she would come in, she would check and like, or maybe she did see it, but she just didn't want to believe that yeah. that's what had happened to her son, you know? Yeah. yeah. She's like, oh, he just smokes weed. And yeah, he d- drinks a little here and there, totally. you know? He doesn't even drink, you know, he just smokes a lot of weed, you know? Yeah. We're like, but it was like bad at this point. Like there was nights I remember I would stay up. Uh, I got this, like I went up to this music festival up in, um, 
up in uh, Humboldt County called Reggae on the River. It was a really big <laughs> reggae festival. Incredible. Did you fit in like real well? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. You know? And uh, and I got this bag of like, it was before it was called Molly. It was still like MD, MDA or MDMA, yeah. you know? And I would sit there and I was like, oh, fuck. This. I, like, I got a gram of it and I tried it. I, the guy I got it from, I remember being like, hey, uh, I just want to get some. Because there's like a bunch of mushrooms and acid and whatever. But I was like, I really want some MDMA, you know? And the guy's like, all right, I'll get some. And he's, I was like, I want a gram because I can't just get like one, one capsule. No. That's what the fuck is that going to do? You know, I'm going to get a little taste and then fuck, I can't find the guy. And then I'm pissed for the rest of the weekend, you know? So he was like, all right, I'm going to give you one dose. You take it now. And then if I come back and you could still see my face by the time I come back, I won't sell it to you because it's not <laughs> worth your fucking money. You know, and I was like, fuck, this is a hell of, this sounds like a hell of a deal to me. Yeah. So even if it sucks, at least I get a free hit or something, you know, so yeah. he gives it to me. And I'm standing around, whatever, you know, and somebody taps me on the shoulder. And I remember, like, looking over and being like, who the fuck is this, you know? And, like, not re like, his face is melting at this point, you know? <laughs> so I got the gram and we did it. And uh, and then, the, and then I like, the next day he was like, hey, if you want some more, meet me. There was, like, a little cafe. And he was like, meet me there and meet me at the cafe, like, at whatever, 8 a.m. or something. And I was like, I stayed up the whole night and I was like, 8 a.m., I have to be there. And I took all the money I had left over and I was like, I'm going to buy as much as this dude has, you know? And he gave me a good deal. But I came back and I would just literally sit in my room, like, up in Laurel Canyon. There was a, there was a hotel that they tried to build. I don't know if you remember. It was like they tried to build this fucking or it was like a condo or something. They tried to build and there was some development that they couldn't get permits because they went too high. So they left it there. And I would sit there in my room like just listening to like weird fucking, you know, I don't even remember what this, you know, it's probably for the best that I don't yeah. remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and if I did, I wouldn't tell you. My fuck is 311 or some shit. You know? <laughs> I was just going to say that. I swear I was going to say that. Is amber the color of your yeah. <laughs> Third eye blind. There's a yeah. chance it could have been 311. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not, not, no. You were a reggae fan. Not, yeah. no. <laughs> but I would sit and just look at this wall and it would like change colors and I would take bong grips all night, you know? And then my mom would come in to like check on me at some point. I'd be like, mom, what are you doing? Leave me alone, you know? But yeah. like, just the, like, the denial fucking like how could you not fucking know something is up you you know? Know, here's the thing i think it's because I, as a parent like you always see your kid as a baby like yeah. even my eight-year-old i mean she's only eight but like i yeah. still see her and i still see my like two-year-old running around in her mm. and that's so, how i am it's four and i'm the same i'm just yeah. like you're still yeah. a baby like yeah. baby, baby. But I also, yeah and I, but I th yeah i think you guys are both right i think it's a thing like i don't think because your mom like you figure all, all the bands and everything throughout her whole fucking career i'm you know i don't know but definitely somebody from almost every band had some kind of bug the last fucking thing she wants to think is her kid has yeah. it yeah you know what i mean like totally. after dealing with all this shit mm -hmm. yeah it's and and it's like like your mom i guarantee you it's like she walked right past it and like subconsciously didn't see it yeah i've heard of that uh -huh. shit happening before my friend had left a bag a pretty decent sized bag of crank on the fucking uh dresser and his mom came and had to wake him up because he'd been sleeping for like two days. And she never saw it. But I'm like, there's no way she didn't fucking see mm -hmm. it. Yeah. There's a fucking light on above it. She didn't touch it or anything, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, this, it's, it, it's a trip. There was, uh, there was this, um, I've told you guys about this, but my friend's brother, you know, because we were all like low rent fucking, you know, dealers and shit. But my friend's brother became a really big uh meth dealer in the early 90s like out here in LA and but they were like involved kind of like with the scene you guys are talking mm -hmm. about you know where you're going to these clubs mm -hmm. like it was the earlier version of like Joseph's and all that it was like this place called Dublin's Bar One yep yeah these type plate remember yep. Bar One Dublin. yeah and I remember Dublin's yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah and they would be going Miyagi's. there <laughs> yep and they were weirdly yeah Miyagi's all mm -hmm. that kind of shit the Fucking what was that little bar next to the barbecue joint on that weird alley? Living was it the living room or the? I don't know. It was just like a little shotgun bar and just pitch black. Bronson Bar? No, no, no. I know that one, and there was just nothing ever good ever happened to me. There. Oh, on Coenga. Yes. By Houston's was the barbecue place. Yes. The not the dark. That, it was room, like a barbecue, key, almost a no, kiosk. Or the room, the burgundy room, the room, the room. The room. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And then burgundy room is across the street. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes, the room, and just anyway, poor Ooh. choices. Yeah. Poor choices happen poor, there always. Yeah. Every, it was in, unavoidable. Just like yeah, let's just pop in there for a couple cocktails. Like, I'm gonna two, tell you right fucking later, now. I don't care what, what anybody says, and I'm older than fucking you guys. 
Koanga is fucking cursed. But oh, yeah, oh my it's God. demonic. Like, yeah. like, like Koanga the, crawl. Yeah, the Koanga. <laughs> and once you get up to Yucca and, and, and that Argyle, all Ooh, that area, that's, that's where bad. it starts getting. Well, here's the, here's the thing I like to think about, uh, like, uh, Koanga. It's like, so you can start somewhere cool at the bottom, you know, the, towards, like, the sunset. Yeah. Yep. But, like, you keep going north, and then there's the overpass and the the, the, the Gar cities, the little <laughs> tent cities. Yep. That's where you'll end. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If you keep yes. drinking uh, yeah. at Coanga, yes. you'll end up in one of those tents. <laughs> yes. With a quick stop at In-N-Out on yeah. the way, right? I think, there's that, I think the In-N-Out's up at the top. Yep. Danny almost ended up there, but he stopped at the Trilon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Trilon. Oh, I did. I ended up right. Uh, yeah, fuck. That's literally my story. Really? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Literally, victim. Of I mean, Koanga. I wasn't living in a fucking tent, but I had homies over there. You know, I would get in <laughs> fights, and I'd be like, "I'm gonna go and be homeless in like two days." And I was like, "This sucks." You know, I'd come out and be like, "Fuck it, I'm cold." Yeah, go back to Wall Canyon. Yeah, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. uh, have you ever seen a ghost, Jack? Um, <clears throat> would define seeing a ghost <laughs> or like felt the presence of something? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, because I, I have I have that show on Travel Channel. Yeah, right. It's, yeah. Uh, it's, no, that's uh, what I was gonna say. <laughs> so uh, it's yeah, it's a you know paranormal investigation show, uh, but I don't think ghosts are what we think they are. Interesting. Ooh, what, yeah. do you, what do you, what? Let's so hear. I, well, I think there's a, there's a few things going on, but I, I I tend to think humans when we don't understand things, we oversimplify them. We go, mm. oh, it's a ghost. Like if you were to put, um, if you were to take like a ball of plutonium. I know that might be a trigger word for you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> <Fuck. And> like, <laughs> dump, <laughs> dump it in the middle of a room back in like the 1840s yeah. with a bunch of the smartest people in the world. You could show them this glowing ball or whatever that gave off heat. They'd be like, what is this thing? This is amazing. It must be it must be some Martian rock or they would come up with some theory. And then if everyone started dying, they'd be like, that's cursed by Satan. Right, yeah. because they just don't understand the science behind. It. They don't understand what's going on, and I think that we don't understand really what kind of energy spectrum these occurrences are happening in. So we just go, "Well, it's a ghost." Right, mm. and I do think that there are. Um, I think sometimes we are encountering weird interdimensional like blips. Mm -hmm. I think we. Um, I think for the most part, though, and this is you know most hauntings. I think are a psychological effect from us encountering an unknown uh, energy spectrum. Uh -huh. And it's eliciting um, responses in us, whether it be, you know, visual hallucinations or auditory hallucinations. Oh. And that, and I think it's causing us to have strange reactions. And I think that, that that's my theory on most of it. Now, there are times we are like, I'm communicating with something here and I don't know what the fuck it is and it's really appearing to be intelligent. Yeah. And that's when I go, all right, is it interdimensional? And then you start going deeper down that hole and you're like, well, wouldn't the afterlife be considered interdimensional? And if there was a way for whatever, wherever our energy goes, like, is there a way for it to to come back and forth from our reality to its? Yeah. I don't know how we got to the, this crazy thing, but we've been getting into the, the ghost question comes up every time. And I was so excited today because I was like. He's going to know. <laughs> <laughs> this is fucking he legit. He did. I, did, yeah. I did my homework today, and I was just like, all oh, right. The well, no, ghost you, show. I, you know, when you think about the show he has, you're like, I, I, this is just my assumption because it's, you know, it's sure. frankly, it's like, because you're like, okay, we know Jack grew up here. That but it's also, all real is your assumption, right? Well, no, I'm no kidding, it's not I'm that, kidding, but it's I'm like, kidding. here's what I thought, literally, because I, I don't know where the fuck Jack lived when he was a kid. I know Jack lived in England, though. Right. And when I think of that, I'm like, oh, yeah. well, Jack probably lives in a fucking castle that had a ghost. That's <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Like, unless you tell me different, I would. And anybody asks, I'm like, motherfucker probably lived in a castle. There was, there was always thunder and lightning yeah. above our castle. It yeah. could be sunny everywhere, but there'd just be clouds and thunder <laughs> and bats. But doesn't that? Of course, they were bats. The sound, no, of, like, the sound of your dad's laughter yeah. Yeah. echoing through that. But I, you know, you're like. I don't know. It's a weird thing. You're like, okay, the Osbournes have lived in fucking England. It's going to be in a castle. It's going to be fucking haunted. I literally assumed that. <laughs> yeah. Did you did you have a haunted uh, the childhood house, homes? Yeah. The, so the house that we we still have in England, um, I believe is haunted. Okay. I, I think it's more residual though. It's, yeah. I think you know we use that term in the ghost hunting world where residual is like a an energy echo. So like. Um, you know, people will say, oh, you know, I I see a woman walking down the hallway, but it doesn't seem like the woman is intelligently responding. It's like an, hearing an echo down a canyon. You're like, oh, okay, but that was, someone made that noise 
a second ago, but somehow the sound is carrying. Yeah. carrying. Okay. Same thing with kind of the human experience. Is there a way for that energy to be imprinted on a place? You know, it's like when people huh. go um, to an area of like a, a battle or something, and it's like, I, I think it's more residual energy than necessarily intelligent. And, and I think that's what's at our house in England. So, okay, so... Friendly or not friendly? Friendly, I think. I, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I think actually ne- neither nor... Who knows? Because right, it's not yeah. intelligent. It's just residual energy. It's kind of like, uh, you know, it's funny. We've done investigations on places and people will say, I've seen and heard the voices of people who are still alive. Uh, this one location we investigated, the, the woman that was kind of the owner and she operated the business there... Um, people would see her all the time at the location when she wasn't there or they would hear her talking. She wouldn't be there. But I think there are some locations, like I was saying, with this en- that uh, have this energy within its walls that a la- imprints, energy will imprint. So, so is, uh, sorry, not, 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 uh, um, basically, so it's like it's energy from the woman who had the place, right? It's still, still alive. Right. And, yeah. So it's kind of like, right. okay, it's, that's like what I thought. it's like a footprint in the sand. It's like, I can see that someone was there. Yeah. They're not here now, but they definitely were there. It's like, what oh, if our energy okay, is making okay. a footprint? I see what you're saying. In a location. Yeah. So then it would like, whether you went there or fucking Mike or whoever, you would all see the same. Right? <laughs> yeah. But here's, here's, here's an fucking interesting Mike. thing though. Yeah. <laughs> How often do you hear when people see a ghost they're with like four people it's very rare that all four of them will see that same thing right it's usually maybe one, one person's right. like holy shit i saw the old lady yeah and but no one else does which leads me to believe it's uh, an internal experience and it's a hallucination huh. just like when the crazy guy's under the bridge saying the black helicopters are there can't you see them yeah and you're like no i can't but he fucking can yeah and so it's that thing is this energy we're encountering giving us hallucinations Fuck, that's interesting no, so I, that's why that's no, why when you're getting yeah. high, you gotta have somebody with you. You see that shit? No, <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> yes. I got a quick. All right, so yeah, then yeah. I got a quick ghost story. I mean, whatever, call it whatever you know, whatever you want. But I've been holding it, and I think this is fucking great. You know, because I want to get your opinion on it. So, I grew when I was around like 16, 17. My mom, whatever. My parents split up. My mom got uh, got with my now stepdad, um, and they bought a house up in Laurel Canyon, and. We were like just south of Mulholland, right? Laurel Canyon Place. There's like a little street that just like. I, I was around. living on Laurel Pass for a year. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, hey, Ruth. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, You're right by the tennis club. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Real rough. And, up there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and my friend Mark, rest in peace, who was like the first, I've talked about him a bunch. He was like the first person that I lost to this disease. You mm. know, my friend Mark Obayashi, who was like, who told me, like, when I'm ready to get help, like, go to a meeting don't use IV drugs and whatever. And that was one of the last conversations we had. There was a night where we would, uh, our, our like childhood, I don't know if you, did you ever go to Kibbutz room? Did yeah, you ever? yeah. Yeah. Kibitz, that yeah. Was, so we would go fucking Kibbutz and get fu- fucking shit. I just still can't, there, yeah. I, I can't wrap my head around because you guys are going there as kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And everybody's just like, oh yeah, fuck yeah, yeah. join in. Dude, it was all who you know. If, if yeah. like, if, the door guy was cool with the owner of the bar and he signed, if they were just like, oh, whatever. Yeah. Fuck. Sorry. There, I mean, and there was like a few door guys that would like go from place to place. Yeah. So once you were in, you know, like you remember the pirate, like we just called him the pirate. The dude, he had like long hair and he always dressed like some Johnny Depp shit. Yes. Yeah. 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 The pirate. I don't know his name, yeah. you know, but that fool would always let us into like, and it's like the most exclusive fucking nightclubs and bars in Hollywood, you know, where like, it's like. If it didn't matter how much money you had or whatever, like if you weren't somebody that like the, they just wouldn't, you know, like yeah. there's yeah. no you couldn't slide them anything to let you in, you know. So we were we were at Kibitz one night and we got a bunch of blow after and uh, we must have been Mark just got a car. So he was like 17. I was probably 18 at the time. And uh, he had this old Lincoln town car and we were up. And we would always like be like, all right, let's go. And like we'd park somewhere and just like fucking we're going to like do some, you know, let's do the rest of this coke and then we'll go home, you know, and whatever. Like we each got a Xanax or something like and then we'll do it all again tomorrow. See you at four <laughs> or something, you know. <laughs> and we were sitting up there and I don't remember what street it was on, but it was somewhere. And it was like one of those nights where it was like fucking and this thing was like the car was fucking prehistoric, you know, so there was no heat or anything in it. So we're sitting in it. And it was like one of those freezing cold nights and like. The sun wasn't coming up yet, but it was about to. And mm-hmm. we're sitting there just fucking miserable. Like I had a, like a hoodie with the jacket on over it. He had like three sweaters on. You know, we're sitting there like shivering, trying to do this coke. And we look out of the window and we see a dog walker come by. And his dog walker is wearing like 
a tank top and short, like, you know, and like, like jogging shorts. And she has like a bunch of dogs and she's just walking by. And we look at each other and we're like, how the fuck is she not freezing? I mean, it was like 40 degrees, you know? Yeah. We're like, what the fuck is that? Like, how is like, what the, you know, and we looked at it. It was one of those, like, where we looked at each other and we're like, mm-hmm. we, we like, yeah, we, we both saw that, you know, we both yeah. saw this chick there and she walked by and it was kind of weird. Cause then we looked back and she wasn't there. So we were like, all right, maybe we've been awake for too long. Like, this is fucking weird, you know? I was like, take me home. This is shit's getting, I don't like this. Whatever's going on, I don't like it, you know? Yeah. It's too cold. We're up too yeah. long. Fuck it, you know? So he drops me off. We go to sleep. And, uh, and we would always go and hang out at the country store right there, yeah. you know? And so the next day I'm at the country store and I'm getting like a sandwich or a coffee or something or some smokes and I'm talking. And uh, and there's like this weird somber mood in the air, you know? And everyone, I was like, fuck, what's going on? You know? And I remember here and then somebody said something like, Man, what a shame. I can't believe that happened to her. And I was like, what? Like, what are you talking about? And they go, yeah, you know, the Laurel Canyon dog walker, she was found murdered yesterday. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, still, you know, fucking chills, like talking Holy about it, you know? Holy shit. And I don't know if it, like, I don't, like, what I think is, like, maybe she was taking those dogs for one last while. It was, like, her spirit taking it. But, like, it's just fucking so absurd, but you know? But was it after you, it wasn't after you saw her that she get murdered? I don't know. I don't know. I think it was. I, I Danny, don't know. did you? <laughs> no, no. Like, we're in a safe space. What <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> about Jack solves the case? Yeah. 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 Like, Come get him. I was yeah. just thinking that unfolded. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> fuck, we're going to have to kill Jack. <laughs> <laughs> no. Dude, Char- I'm just looking at Charlie like he's the, he's the youngest. He's the strongest. <laughs> God damn it. I, I only got wind to get through one of these guys. <laughs> How do I slip a note to Keith? <laughs> yeah, but I think it happened. Like I don't remember exactly. You know, it was a while. But was but it I, within a window? Yeah, that... it was within a window. Wow. Or yeah, it was like the next did day. She, like, did she, did it? Did she acknowledge you guys or just head down? Like... No, head down. Just walked right past us. Wow. And was she solid? Like I see you, or did it look weird? Like ghostly? I think it looked a little good. There was something we, you know, I mean, yeah. I don't know. If, but once again, we were like, you know, like we were fucked up, you yeah. know, but uh, there was something weird and ghostly to it. There wasn't, you know, like, yeah. and it was, just, I think the weirdest part was just that she was dressed like that and it was that cold out. And we were like, what the fuck is she, you know, like, what the fuck are you doing out? It was, must've been like 4 a.m., you know? Yeah. And yeah. I was like, what the fuck are you doing walking? And it wasn't like one or two dogs. It was like a pack of dogs. It was like, wow. you know, six like 20, or seven. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Dude, that's a. Yeah. That's a story, man. Yeah. Wow. Hey, w- what's the weirdest thing you've experienced, whether like on your own or man. on the show or anything? I mean, I've, I have I was at a location last year, and um, it was an old uh, Eastern State Penitentiary in uh, Philadelphia. It's an oh, awesome shit. museum. If you ever get the opportunity, actually, you'd probably really appreciate it because they've actually turned it into – a museum of um, the uh, of, of the U.S. criminal justice system. Oh, and shit. And they take you through all the phases of it. And Eastern State Penitentiary was actually the first uh, penitentiary in the world. And that's where the term penitentiary came from. Oh. Yeah, mm. so they coined it because the whole thing was you have to pay penitence. Because when it opened, you were in isolation 23 and a half hours a day. You were supposed to pray. You were supposed to, like, you know, yeah. get get God to write you. Um and uh, this place w- experienced, I think, like over 3,000 deaths in its 150 years of operating. Wow. And because it was used as a hospital during tuberculosis outbreaks right. and all this shit. Um, I was in the death row wing where they used to keep guys who were not – they didn't actually execute there, but they would they would keep, keep the them. Keep them to yeah. last, yeah. And um, – this big hanging like industrial light. You know those big round industrial lights that have kind of got the cages on them. Yeah, you see them in like old mental yeah. hospitals. Yeah, They're heavy like, like 50, it's hanging on hanging a, on yeah. a yeah hanging on mm-hmm. a rope or whatever. Mm-hmm. Those are like heavy like thirty five pound like industrial lights. I was getting super freaked out in this area, and I was like, guys, I got to get the fuck out of here. Like I don't I don't like this. Everything in me is like leave. This light above me just starts violently swinging, like as if someone had just smacked it with all their force. It was just whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. And <clears throat> my camera guy was like, that light is, because I couldn't see it was behind me. He's like, the light is swinging above you right now. And I just looked and I was like, get the, let's get the fuck out of here. Like yeah. that was so... Was it at night? Yeah. Yeah, fuck. it was probably around midnight. Um, And then I've had things like, you know, when you do ghost hunts, you'll you'll ask for like you'll do call outs. So you'll be like, hey, if anything's here, tap something, move something, whatever. And we were at this house in uh, in Texas recently. It's called the the Hell House, 
or the hill the hill house the the yes yeah, haunted hell hill house or something like that and it was it, the end of the evening we were kind of wrapping up and this place had a horrible vibe to it it was just you know everyone always says oh what's the best like ghost hunting tool what's the best this that but like we as people like we are the best tools like mm-hmm. we know when like you got to go with your gut like and so it's a pretty good processor we have yeah here. totally yeah. Like, a lot of sensors and receptors you totally can imagine, right and we just had this whole this feeling of just not good and everything associated with this house historically was really negative and there's mm. murders associated and apparently you know there's rumors that saintness live there and this whole th- whatever this whole thing and it was if someone took a baseball bat and smacked it against the wall it was the loudest bang i've ever heard and it was like i was like a house naturally doesn't do that right like, I don't care if there was a, a 120 mile an hour wind outside. Right. It's not going to make a noise like we just heard. And it was so deliberate and so loud. It, I legitimately like jumped out of my skin. I was like, get the fuck out of here now. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so when stuff like that happens. Yeah, that's fucked up. You're just like, what the fuck is it? What is it that we're And you were there with people. Yeah. And they all heard they it. They all heard it. The camera guy literally grabbed me to shield himself from me. He, was <laughs> he like grabbed me and like hid behind me. And I was like, what the fuck? Oh, I'm the human shield? Thanks, <laughs> yeah, bro. Like, bro. Hey, this is really cool. You're fired. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's incredible. So, and, and, and the other one, I guess where it was swinging, you had the, the swinging lamp. There yeah. were people there too. Uh, so uh, for Absolutely, yeah. We don't, and we're super critical on our show. Mm-hmm. We dissect evidence like we call bullshit more often than not. Yeah. And so it's like the the point, I mean, we I was in a place in uh, Buffalo, New York. We we set a flashlight down and allegedly whatever, you know, haunts this place, whatever spirit, energy, whatever you want to call it, um, they will turn flashlights on if you ask them to. And we put a flashlight down and we're firing out questions saying, hey, can you turn this flashlight on? Boom. Flashlight turns. Actually, I'll show you the footage no on my way. phone. I will show you the footage. It was fucking, dude, I was like jaw hit the ground what's that same camera guy he was yeah. like what the fuck <laughs> and then wow. here's the here's the kicker my co-host who i work with katrina is an amazing paranormal investigator she goes okay can you turn it off now turned it off no way dude i will wow. show you this footage fuck yeah wow now can you when you watch <laughs> other shows that do a sim- this similar thing can you tell who who the bullshitters are yes i can well okay i'll say this <clears throat> Um, I think there are really awesome people that work in this in this industry because it, it is at this point, and it's a very, yeah. but it's very competitive. It's very like nichey and like there's you know there's like clicky. Yeah, yeah, it's very. And um, I think that there are some people that will. I don't want to ever want to say fake evidence because I I don't know if they right. do or don't. But I can say they over exaggerate things for the sake of making good TV. Yeah, and you know that it. Sure. it I mean, it, journalists do that. Yeah, as well. Ex- not exactly. not not a fake. Not saying anything bad about the media. I'm just saying, <laughs> <laughs> Brian Williams, fella. You know, he got himself in trouble for that. Dude, he was under heavy gunfire, bro. You can't say that. <laughs> That's right. That's probably true. Wait, sorry. didn't he kind of get forgiven? Isn't he back on the news? Yeah, I mean, he's listen. like he's like doing like like late late shift. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. he's doing the weather. <laughs> <laughs> he's still on the weather channel. The ten, the 10 o'clock slot. <laughs> But but so so what do you look for? What 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 tells you? Hey, this person's kind of I look I look embellishing. I, I base it on my experience. So when yeah, you yeah. see shows that have had multiple multiple seasons and they're hearing like a knock or a tap or whatever, and they're going, "Oh my god!" and they're like freaking and screaming out. You're like, dude, at this point in the game, if yeah. you're getting freaked out like that. You're doing the wrong fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, so that is when I call bullshit. Like, for yeah. me, when I get freaked out, it's because I'm genuinely freaked out. Uh, you get desensitized just by any sense. It's like if you're right. a firefighter, a paramedic, a, you know, a anything, doctor, like anything you do enough will desensitize you. So it's, I mean, like addiction, you know, yeah. like the, where we end up, if you would have told yourself that before you even started, you'd be like, dude, that's insane. How would I ever... Why right. would I ever be shooting up with toilet from you know, toilet <laughs> yeah, water? Yeah. <laughs> Are there any places you wouldn't go? Um, oh man, like uh, a, you wouldn't fuck with. You know what? It's I, I'm I'm really anything that is 
alleged like demonic Satan yeah. like yeah, I'm with you because I, I'm so on the fence with like demonic entities like Fuck I, that. why risk it well right? that's the thing and it's like okay maybe there is an intelligent energy out there that is genuinely evil yeah my thing though is evil is uh, and what is evil is uh, society governs that what we yeah. perceive evil in America you go to certain parts of the world is not evil Right. You know, mm -hmm. it's just normal. You know, they, in certain parts of the Middle East, they're still stoning people, chopping hands off. Like, we go, yeah. that's fucked up. That's evil. Yeah. But they go, no, that's just normal. Yeah. So for me, I'm like, but that's a, that's a, that's a modern social construct, the definition of what is evil. Yeah. And so I struggle with demons in that sense, but I do think there's some dark energy. Yeah. And I don't know how to quantify it. I don't really know how to describe it, but there is dark energy out there that has, um, that operates in in a in a field that we still don't understand. Yeah, I agree. Like, I mean, I haven't seen shit, but like, you know, in the in the late when I was a teenager, we'd fuck, get high and fuck with these Ouija boards. Yeah, and there's no question the fucking thing something was moving it. No question. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like because you're always like, "That was you, Mike." Yeah. Oh, fucking Jack moved it. You know, yeah. Danny mm -hmm, stopped. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can. Yeah, tell. you're like you nobody's moving, and it's always moving that fucking figure eight, which is even weirder. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but I'm like, we just did one recently and we haven't had a huge amount of success this season with Ouija boards. Um, but we started doing one just uh, like two weeks ago and we were in, um, God, where were we? We were in uh, Flagstaff, Flagstaff, oh. Arizona um, at the, at the, what is it? Hotel. I forgot the name of it. The, um, but anyway, it's supposed to be haunted. We're in this room and this Ouija board was flying. I mean, it, the, the planchette was just. It was crazy. I mean, and to the point where I was like almost lifting my fingers off. Yeah. And this, and everyone was, and this thing was shooting around. And I was like, I, dude, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what is happening, but something is. Yeah. I, I mean, those things, you know, they freak me the fuck out. Yeah. yeah. It's like, like, it's just like, I, I don't, like I said, I've never seen anything. I've, even as a kid, man, I didn't fuck with that shit. Yeah. Well, I, we like, was, you could buy that shit at Milton Bradley. They, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. You get a Ouija board, like just go to Toys R Us and get a Ouija yeah. board. And I just remember, I don't know if it's like an Italian thing and like growing up hearing about the Malocchio and how many like older grand, you know, women of my grandparents' age would, you know, friends of family or, or that great aunt, you know, who was a little bit extra you know would, <laughs> would just be like you know don't mess around with that you know the people you'd hear a weird story mm -hmm. it was a little lot of that old world stuff that came over from italy and so even my dad was just like no oh, fuck with yeah that. like why would you fuck with that why yeah. why like this is supposed to be a this is not a game they they connect just don't fuck with that yeah. and, and i was like all right i won't and the thing with ouija's is that when you start looking into the kind of mythology with it there is supposed to be an entity which is attached to Ouija or spirit or whatever board you're using mm. called um, uh, Zozo. And Zozo is allegedly who is communicating to you. That's the go-between. That c controls the thing? Yeah. Like that's that's the entity attached to Ouija boards. Is this huh. That sounds like a spa. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Zozo. <laughs> spa Zozo this week. <laughs> Bikini waxes and Brazilians. Clean you up back to front. $48. Wait, you know where Jack needs to go? Have you heard of Stull, Kansas? No. Fuck, you got to go there. Okay. For your show. Okay. Like, I, I'm going to send you this episode we did with, you know, Blackie, right? Yeah, From yeah. From Urge Overkill? Yeah. Blackie told this fucking story, like, they were on tour years ago, and it's supposed to be the center, was it the center of witchcraft in America? Oh, interesting. It's like oh, where right. William Burroughs lived and, like, all the people who were into the occult yeah. lived, but they went, I'm going to send it to you, I don't okay. want to ruin it, but I think you'll be fascinated. It's like, yeah. I haven't been, but it's like, he was, it's like a one light town in the middle of, like, it's outside of Lawrence, Kansas, right? Mm, yeah. He said, and but he said like it, he's never experienced any shit like it. You know, yeah. wow. it, it's fucking. He also said me. that's where his bad luck began. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So I, I don't know if you. Want to hear yeah, I don't know, but dude, I, I I think I've actually had shit come home with me. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah, dude. My house is brand new. It was built in 2014. My girlfriend has been seeing shit. My buddy who he lived he lives between L.A. and San Francisco. And he'll stay at my place when, you know, when he comes to town or whatever. And he's been seeing shit. My kids have been seeing stuff. And, like, just recently I started having experiences and I was like, what the fuck? The, really? The, yeah, dude. Like, I woke up in the middle of the night and there was a woman. Um, the, it would fall under the old hag 
um, myth. Mm. Do you know about that? The old hag is that no. like it's an no, old no, no. woman that people wake up and she sat on them. And that's when people get like bad sleep paralysis. They can't breathe. They can't move. Yeah. Okay. So the old hag is what's do supposedly is what does that. Um, but this old woman was leaning over me. I get like chills talking about it because it fucked me up. And this it's was freaking me out right now. <laughs> and she had long dark hair, black circles over her, no expression on her face. She was looking at me, and I'd woken up actually before I even saw. I woke up out of a dead sleep, punching into the air like full on like fight mode, like right out of a deep sleep. And I lean back and look to my left, and there's this woman stood over me, long dark hair, black circles over her eye, and she just looks to her right, and there's a huge towering just shadow, like huge shadow figure. And I just, dude, I'm about as religious as this table, yeah. but <laughs> I, I literally, I just because I have done so much of this, and people yeah. will say, you know, recite like the Lord's Prayer, all that, dude, I closed my eyes and just started rattling off Lord's Prayer, and I fell right to sleep. It was the fucking, and I woke up the next morning like, what the fuck was that? What in the wow. fuck was that? And it honestly, you were, I mean, yeah, it just came right back. To it, you. it came right back to oh, me, and it, it was the, it was like someone turned the light off, and then I woke up, and it was like morning, and I'm like, I I couldn't. It was. Are there consistencies in what the people are seeing at yes. your house? Yes. Crap. Oh, yeah. there is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't my, like that. <laughs> my my girlfriend keeps seeing um a cloaked a cloaked figure standing in my bedroom. She's also seen the woman that I've seen. My daughter has seen the woman I've seen. Um, so it's a thing where I got to, I, I need to have, a, I know a bunch of mediums and yeah. like awesome like spiritualists. And so I'm going to have them come just do a full like house cleanse. And yeah. I don't, I actually don't think I've brought things home. I think, or whatever, like I think when you lean into that energy, that energy knows you're looking for it. Yeah. You know? Ab absolutely. So it's, it's turning up. Yeah. That's exactly what our, our 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 friend Chris says. You know, who who a friend of ours who lived in this old old stone house that was like the center of town out in Hagerston, and it was Hagerstown, Maryland, and it's just crazy. It was just you know sixteen hundreds. Yeah, he was a tenant farmer there, super fucked up and crazy. He was like, he gets nervous. He never likes to talk about it because yeah. he's like, I feel like whenever I get into it, whenever I start poking around, yeah. I start getting little little weird hits. Yeah. I dude, this house that we're in, I wouldn't be surprised if shit goes on here. I got a weird vibe just walking. When you took me down to the basement, I was like, "Huh? Oh crap!" Like I got a, I got the total, <laughs> like, really? I got the total woogie boogies here. Really? Yeah. I mean, it's a great place, but I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if like. You know well, glad you like it. No, we'll be you know moving is, now. <laughs> one thing I, I like, I've God never felt it. like here, but now that Jack men mentions it, every time I go down there, every time, even if we're we're working. When I go down to that basement, I feel like I'm in a different uh, space than the rest of the house. There's well, you're in the basement. <laughs> no, but I'm no, telling I you. Know, I'm but you know what I mean? It yeah. feels like <laughs> yeah. every time I go down those stairs, the minute I come down there, I'm like, you know, it's it, there's some yeah. weird. Not that I've seen anything, but I'm like. You I, too, Charlie? You're nodding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes. I mean, do, you, do you feel vibe here? In the basement. In the basement. Sorry. Yeah. Also. As soon as you're out, I feel even the entryway there. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because I think, I, to be honest, now that we're on the subject, every time I go down there, as cool as it is, I'm like, why in the fuck did they rebuild this thing? Or why did they, you know what I mean? Because it was built after the house or whatever. Yeah. You know what? The, the back door in the basement, yeah. if it's not locked, it'll always open. Mm -hmm. And I, I always just count it to wind, but it's, it's in a weird spot that the wind can't really get to as far as, like I never investigated it, but yeah. that door was open this morning. Why? Really? Yeah. Hmm. Does anyone actually live at this place? Mm -mm. Okay, so it's just used as like a business. Yeah, I, I mean, mean the, the, it's here before. But. Yeah, how 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 is it sleeping here? I I'm on edge. Yeah, really? I haven't had any experiences except for like with the alarm. But, but like, but th this bathroom window opens too in the guest house. Okay, so like it's that point. Like, <laughs> but to that point, like you're like something's not like why why would there be a reason for you to feel that way? Yeah. Which then leads into my theory of like we're encountering an energy that's eliciting responses and we don't know what it is, but it's, it's there. Yeah. But it could be a vibration. It yeah. could be a radon. It yeah. could be cell towers. Like it could be whatever. But it could also be a haunted demonic presence. No, yeah. uh, let's please hope to God. Not. I'm not even joking. If you're here, just leave us be. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's just so much on my plate right now with the Corona and the whole business. Uh, God. 
Anyway, um, the old house. Yeah. You know, we yeah. we had a our previous uh, workplace, mm-hmm. our previous mansion, because um, <laughs> that's how we roll. Um, <laughs> was that had some weird vibes? Now I've never slept over here. Are you talking about the Bonaduce? Yeah, yeah the Bonaduce. People said, you know, uh, one of the, the guys who works here, his mom, who also works with us, you know, they both heard and you know things that were. Re- chairs rolling around so when there was Charlie. no one in the house. Charlie as well. And and I slept over there once. Oddly enough, I slept in the basement there. For whatever reason, the basement had the best vibe of that house, I felt like, yeah. to me. Because it was like, and I don't know if that's just because it was like it had the, the movie theater down there. Yeah. And it was kind of goofy. And it had a bar, you know. And it was like a <laughs> nautical theme meets <laughs> a circus theme. Like, it was Danny Bonaducci, whatever that animal would do to a fucking house. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Danny, but yeah. come on, she fits. And and, and and like so, it was like that. And so I was like, all right, I, I, I felt the safest in the most cartoonish part, you know, of the house. But like, I slept. I I only I, it was when the power came. I came back and the power was out, and I had, at my house, and I had to go there and sleep. And I was like, fuck me, because I have a CPAP. Yeah, and I'm like, fuck me, what? Not long after I bought a portable battery, I spent like <laughs> seven hundred and fifty bucks on a portable battery. I'm like, fuck it, no, that's fine, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like never doing that again. The yeah. ghost of Danny Bonaducci. Oh, uh, the the Dutch. Am I Bonaduce. crazy? Or is there some coke on top of that pinball machine? There was. What are you right? talking about? At the Bonaducci house. How dare house, you? Wait. How dare you? <laughs> okay, it might have been Mike's coke, but no, 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 no. There were scratches. There were scratches. Oh. Yeah, there were there were cuts with white shit on in the it. top of it. Yeah, I mean there were. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that would just be the cutting of whatever the plexi or whatever it was, but yeah. he had oh, a pinball yeah. machine, and clearly people been... cut coke. Well, I I remember that. I remember people doing that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. That, there's a ghost right there. <laughs> <laughs> The ghost of cocaine past. I'm the most. I'm more afraid of that than than probably most spirits. Um, uh, I, I when I was in Old Folsom, the original building, the it's these weird rock buildings, and down the middle they have the hangman gallows still there. No way. Yeah, the, oh yeah, that haven't been. Um, I mean, they probably haven't been used since the 30s. I'm yeah, guessing, 40s. Holy but they're shit. in because it's it's the two original buildings that they're like it's weird. It looks like Battlestar Galactic. They're literally like rigid like it looks kind of like if there was like long boulders yeah and they were carved out the okay. cells were carved mm. out but uh they've built like kind of i would say the equivalent of like what it is a warehouse structure mm-hmm. so just you know what i mean framed up around it yeah and then down the center of them is the hangman gallows or down at the wow. center of the two buildings and i didn't see anything but i felt weird when i lived in there it was much colder than the other buildings yeah but and my friend angel said that there was ghosts in that motherfucker he, he would see dude weird prisons shit. i Prisons and asylums are some of the wildest places I've ever had to investigate. Because it's it's literally like, you know, our show's called Portals to Hell. Yeah. A prison is literally a portal to hell. Yeah. Yeah. You're taking someone, putting them in a bunch at a building with a bunch of, well, by all accounts, bad people for the yeah, most part. For sure. You know, there are some innocent guys in there, but for yeah. the most part, bad people. And a fuck ton of people die in prison. Yeah. And it's just that energy just amplifies, and it's just, oof, man, every prison we've ever been to. We just investigated um, Ohio State Reformatory, which was the prison from uh, Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. And that place was wild. Is it closed? It is closed. Okay. But they actually, well, they closed this part, and then they rebuilt it. Uh, there's a, uh, on this on the same plot, there's a minimum and maximum security facility oh. there now. But, oh. like, while you're in the old place, you're cruising around, and... You look behind you and you see a bunch of dudes out in the yard in the maximum security place. And like, oh, right. Yeah, it's weird. And there's like, there's signs on all the windows saying, do no pictures out this window because they don't want you coming in snapping shots and, right. you know, getting the lay of the land. Was there anything there? Yes. We had some really, um, we had some just, once again, vibey place. And it's it, that seems like the kind of place that the longer you're there, the more it reveals itself to you. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You know, some places we go to, it's just on and popping instantly. In other places, you know, you interview these witnesses and they're like, oh, I've worked here for 10 years and it is the scariest. I've seen shit that would blow your mind. And when you investigate, you're like, man, it's really not that crazy. Yeah. So I, I think some places get used to you. Well, we know, at least with this place, we know the owner, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the daughter of the, of the, of the, the people, the, 
couple who owned it. Yeah. Um, and she still owns the house and we rent it from her. Um, she says she's never, right, as far as, right, I, I think we've asked, she's never experienced anything here. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Yeah. But, you know, it's but there. her dad's not the original owner, is he? No, 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 no. They built this thing in the 20s, I think. Yeah. You know, yeah. 20s. So he probably time. bought it in the 40s, right? I think he bought it in like the 60s or something. 50s, oh, shit. 60s, yeah. So there could yeah. be all kinds. There There's some dark shit stuff. going up on Los Feliz. Hell yeah. Oh, dude. There's a weird fucking thing up here. Yeah. About there is. The, I'm telling you. Remember, Do you ever go to houses up here? Uh, like, well, I used to live one right right down here. And this is where the murder house is. Do you know about the house? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Where the, the Christmas tree was yeah, there yeah, yeah. forever. Yeah. You ever go there? Uh, we Well, they won't let you Can investigate. tell that story for the listeners? <laughs> okay. So, oh, yeah. Right. What's the yeah, I don't so know. So, the Los Feliz so murder good. house. It's oh. on, is it New, New Hampshire? Is it? It's, it's either on New Hampshire or off of it. Yes. Like yeah. on Comet or Cummings oh, or whatever However it is, is when yeah. you get up to the Greek. Yeah. you going up to the Greek, whatever that's. Yeah, New Hampshire. Okay, so. On New Hampshire, there was this house that I think the story goes on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, the father like murdered everyone in the house, like the wife, the kids. It was like, I think it was the father. You might yeah, no, you're right. Okay. He was a doctor or something. Yeah, yeah. And he just lost it, killed everyone. And the house just after they cleared out the bodies and closed the case, whatever, no one touched the house. So you would drive past and the Christmas tree from like the 60s was still there with the gifts and yeah. all this shit like it was just been set for Christmas. They'd literally shut the door and locked it and no one ever went ever again. And yeah. the craziest shit. And they only just recently sold it. Yeah, I read some weird article. So that happened and some, like the dude, like, I don't know where he lives. Like I want to say in the valley or something, mm -hmm. like the deep valley. You know, some so some couple had bought the house after it happened. It just sat, like you're saying. Yeah. They kind of didn't fuck with it. And then they died in the sun and you know what I mean? Like yeah. just nobody did shit with it until they sold it. Yeah. It sat there with all the people's shit in it. I wonder yeah. if they're going to just tear it down. I They've already, I think, I think they redid it they, or redid it partially. Yeah. And I think someone's living in there now because I was like, Oh really? We need to go fucking do an episode there. And they were like, sorry, we're not interested. Oh yeah. So we reached out and they shut it down. But the, up until 2000, I mean, I was living here in 2012 and the yeah. Christmas tree was still in the window. Yeah. Shags and then went up there and jumped the fence to check it out. Really? Yeah. yeah it's it's weird because I'm like, I, I, not so, I'm just, I'd love to open those presents. I hate yeah, to say it. Right. But, you know, like. What was in them? <laughs> I, well, you know, the tweaker yeah. in me. Yeah. 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 Some knickknacks. Yeah. 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 Keep, yeah. keep, keep yeah. peeking in that window yeah. like, that's a nice bike. Yeah. <laughs> well, the house was fucking amazing, yeah. right, Jack? It's yeah. just like. Spanish. Yeah. 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 It yeah. was Crazy. beautiful. It just yeah. falling apart. Yeah. Mm. And I didn't think they were ever going to fucking sell. I'm like, nobody's yeah. going to buy that fucking thing. Yeah. It, it's dilapidated. Totally. It was. Yeah. It's all like supposedly flooding all over the seams and, you know, like oh, yeah. the roof seams and shit. Before we forget, I just want to ask is another question we do ask you ever fuck with pcp <laughs> never fuck with pcp <laughs> cool. um no never hung right. out with chum got it uh, good, good for you yeah good i hate it this motherfucker loves it but yeah, I, I really loved it yeah, yeah. but i'm yeah. twisted but jack yeah. was taking fucking quaaludes that's the, the equivalent was, but. i'm like a i'm like a champagne guy you know <laughs> <laughs> quaaludes and oxycodone please yeah. I, don't, I don't mess with the initial drugs <laughs> anything with an initial yeah needs a full name or jack yeah. don't huh <laughs> there, there's not enough syllables in that drug <laughs> yeah i was more of a champagne of beers guy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got a high life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, I read something recently about someone. I think they. I read a horrible article about someone like killed their kid on PCP recently. Like I read, a, it was like this woman lost her shit and like stabbed her child, like oh, a baby, fuck. and like called the cops on herself. <sighs> they, I mean, wild shit happens to people on PCP, yeah. and like, uh, like. I've only smoked it once, but <laughs> I mean, if but you can't hang. It was awful. I mean, it was yeah. fucking terrible. But I mean, I couldn't even really function. You know what I mean when I did it? But what is it? It's it's made of a bombing fluid. Yeah. Is what it is, right? Okay, so that's real. That's not just like conspiracy no, theory. Yeah, I'm no. pretty sure that's true. Wow. Yeah. But wow. you know, you and I think it's the same as angel dust. Mm. I don't know a lot about it, but you're really fucking out there. It's basically angel dust, I think. Right? No, it is. Yeah. I think. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Dust. Yeah. But it's just like how heroin's tar here. For some reason, it's PCP here instead of angel dust. Mm. I guess you know, like, because I've never come across angel wow. dust. We have yeah. a friend who's 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 just this adorable gal, uh, Danny. Yeah. And and back in the day, she'll just tell stories from back in the day. She loved that sherm. Oh yeah. She loved it, and I was like, what? 
like, re, like you know, she's like a pretty hip, cool, you know, kind of tastemakery gal. And you're like, wait a second, rewind that. She's yeah. like, oh yeah, I love the Sherms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. I mean, it's one of those drugs, and I think uh, Peter that was on nailed it. Where he was like, it's everybody who does it. It has a different effect on you. Know? Yeah. yeah. It's like there's some people that you know where like you're like oh like the I never got the superpower fucking oh I'm gonna flip this fucking truck shit you know I was just like right. fuck this is cool you know like, I would just kick back and whatever you know but then I had friends that would like get really fucking scary violent you know yeah. like, I'm gonna fuck you know like the dude with the fucking shotgun like you know you couldn't go anywhere without a weapon I was like that this is not smart yeah you know? like why would you yeah so she just, always it always she always made it sound kind of like it was just. Like the the strongest pot you could possibly imagine, not you know, with a little bit of a hallucinogenic I don't element pot to it. When I think PCP, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's but like I think you're really she also. I think she smoked it. I you know because yeah. I've talked to her about that, yeah, but like, yeah. I think she like you know took it. She didn't smoke it like fucking we would. She gave like, it, she did uh, a Bill Clinton hit. I yeah, mean, yeah, I did not in her. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, maybe. I think like little hits, not yeah. like us, she didn't do a gravity okay. bong of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Oh man, gravity <laughs> bong. Oh man, uh, never leave home without one, right? That's right. It's your buddy's, your buddy's, your buddy's motto. Is there mm-hmm. anything, by the way, that you're working on that you want to tell the folks about? I mean, it's yeah, just the portals to hell actually yeah. premieres on the 13th of March. So oh, great, travel oh, channel, cool. excellent. Yeah, I will be tuning in. Wait, awesome. That's tomorrow? Is it tomorrow? Yeah, fuck. holy Today's shit. Today's the 12th. Yeah, yeah it's, it's tomorrow. tomorrow. It's coming oh, up. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. right, Friday we'll, the 13th. Yeah. Oh. We'll, dude, we got Friday the 13th, coronavirus, full moon. Like, dude, what in the storms. fuck? Storm, dude. Thank God everything's fine in the White House. Yeah. Ooh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what would we be doing without that? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, count our blessings. Right? Yeah. Seriously. Mm. Uh, you got any other story? You got any other partying fun? Let's see, fun. Um, I was talking to our, a mutual friend of ours earlier, yeah, Ryan, and he yeah. was like, "Yeah, he's like, oh fuck, Jack's got some really fucking." I'm long. trying to think. I, I know I do. I know. Oh, okay. Here's a fun, funny story. All right. Yeah. yeah. All, All right. right. <laughs> so it was my my parents did a a thing at the Beverly Hills Hotel where they renewed their wedding vows and threw this like two million dollar party. It was the fucking craziest biggest party you've probably ever seen in your life they had like i mean they were auctioning stuff there was like different themes and different parts it was like it was like something out of like my big fat gypsy wedding yeah. like, <laughs> it was egregious beyond egregious and i'm six uh, i was 17 at the time it was actually right before i got sober and we're at the bar and i'm i'm doing shots and i grab it i'm doing shots with marilyn manson uh-huh <laughs> And Justin Timberlake. <laughs> oh, nice. And I'm like hammering these shots and giving her to Manson. I've known Manson like forever. He's, I've known him since I was like 14. Uh-huh. Um, and Justin Bieber looks over to me. He goes, no, sorry, not Justin Bieber. Justin Timberlake. Yeah. Justin Timberlake looks over at me and goes, um, hey, man, you, you might want to chill out. And I don't remember this, but my friend did. I apparently looked at him. I said, shut the fuck up, pussy, and do another shot. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know something's wrong when you're slamming shots down an yeah. NSYNC member's mouth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Dude, I have, I, I, uh. I was sober, but I I kind of clown that dude too. Yeah, we were doing the Sony. This is commercial. one of my favorites. This is one of my favorite. Fucking we we're doing the Sony commercial in New York, and um, I had worked with him before. You know, when he was probably around the time you're talking about, he had done like I did this Target ad. He was in. He was really cool. And then, uh, my friend was doing this Gnarls Barkley video, and I didn't, you know, I didn't really know Tim like just from that thing. But my my other friend, I'm like, hey, will you ask him if he'll be in this Gnarls Barkley video? And he did. You know, like so. Yeah. So my friend was gonna do this commercial, and he's like. And he had texted me, he goes, yo, you said Timberlake's cool, right? I go, yeah, he was cool, man. And he goes, all right, cool. So we go to do this job, and I don't know what it was, man, but he wouldn't be in that cool on this thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we're shooting in New York, and he's there's all these, like, it's like Peyton Manning, and then this, uh, fuck, who was the other one? Oh, him, Peyton Manning and, and Justin Timberlake, and then there would be other two other people would play in and out of this thing. And they were like, uh, uh, like the... the this little girl who's like the world's fastest reader, all this kind of shit. Yeah. But at one point, Amy Sedaris was on there, who's really fucking funny. And the first take, she was super funny. And he was like, I don't know, Timberlake was kind of pissed. Like, what the fuck's going on here? I'm like, fuck, this is wild, right? So he was kind of being a dick. Like, everybody's kind of bummed on him. 
So we break for lunch, and I'm the only one who had worked with him before. And my friend is drinking. He's like, I thought you thought this. I thought you said this dude was cool, man. Dude, I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm like, dude was nice. I don't know what the fuck. So I'm standing there. And he comes walking by with his like, you know, the entourage, right? Mm -hmm. And he's walking by like with this like bitter look on his face. And he takes his jacket off, and his armpits have giant sweat rings. And uh, I look at him. I go, "You bringing sweaty back?" And he goes, <laughs> "He goes, I'll make the jokes around here, Keith." And I go, "We'll be waiting." <laughs> Amazing! <laughs> so good. That's one of my favorites. Dog. That's so good. Oh man. Yeah, but it was. There were fun times though. But then there were shitty times. Yeah. 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 Uh, did, did that? Did your rem, did did your uh, cavalier attitude get you ever get you into any uh, any any pushing and shoving or anything like that? Um, I there was one time like somehow it got pinned on me for this huge bar fight that happened at that <laughs> club in uh, called Excess. Mm -hmm. We were in this the, the the balcony. It was kind of like a or like a auditorium like, yeah so the dance floor was in the middle and the balcony was like seats and tables so everyone would dance in the middle and there'd be a you know everyone would be sat up and you know looking down and <clears throat> i'm sat at a table and i see this glass come flying through the air from the dance floor and like smash against the wall and i was like what the f and i go and look over the balcony and this dude is like looking at me going like crazy and i'm like what what's that and this dude comes running up the stairs and he's getting bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> as he's coming up i'm like that is a very very large very strong black man and he is coming right towards me and i'm like what the fuck and i look at my friend uh ross and i'm like ross was kind of kind of gangster himself yeah and i was like ross and this and he looks at me and i point and this guy's running towards us and i guess in the confusion, I figured out the guy said that I was throwing glasses down at people on the dance floor. I was fucking throwing glasses. I think my friend had like thrown a couple ice cubes. Oh. And so like when they hit, he thought that's ah, glass. And he comes run and this fight, the entire balcony, it was like it was like an old western. <laughs> like bottles and tables and like no way. everyone is just brawling and my friend's getting kicked in the face by and it was just like Anyone and everyone just dove into this fight that didn't involve anyone up there. <laughs> and so it was like, you. it was the craziest shit and everyone's getting thrown out. My friend's nose is all busted. And, and then they throw me out. And then they throw the guy out that tried to beat the crap out of us. And now we're all out in the street and it's still going on. And no I'm like, way. Like, no, you separate people. <laughs> like, <laughs> one out that exit, one out that exit. Yeah, that was... But it all got blamed on you? No, we, Kind of, but not really. I guess it got blamed on me because I was the person he locked onto as oh, being the culprit. Right. And it wasn't me. I was like, dude, I was just seeing where this glass came from. Uh, and you were like 16? Uh, I was 16 then, yeah. That's so fucking weird. Yeah. <laughs> How do they explain that with the cops coming? I think that's well, why they didn't call yeah, the cops. Yeah. I was just like, get the, the fuck out of here. The guy who's almost in the 10th grade? <laughs> <laughs> he started with the guy who's 35. The guy who's got to go home and do his homework yeah. right now? <laughs> Uh, yeah. uh, uh, all right. Wonderful. Cool. Are we good? Man, what a great, yeah, what a that great. Was great. Thank you yeah. so yeah. much hey, for coming no on, man. Thank you awesome. so, man. That was and, fun. Uh, yeah, and, uh, and, and I hope to maybe We look forward to seeing back. the show. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, you. yeah, I'm gotta, excited. Um, get I'm going to text him that, that Blackie episode. Oh, yeah. So you'll yeah. fucking love that, that. And I guess there's also an Urge Overkill record named Stull. Oh, okay. They named it after. Because him... I, I'll send it to you, but it's like him and Kirk Cobain went there together. They, were, they weren't big yet. Neither band was big yet. Yeah. But they went, they were on tour and they traveled there together. And then all this weird shit happened. Yeah. But I'll send yeah. it to you. Do you ever, have you guys ever heard the story of Jason Everman? Ever, Everman? No. 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 Greatest story ever. This guy was in Nirvana. Yeah. He was in Pearl Jam. And he basically went, fuck it, joined the army. These bands blew up in the early 90s. He became like a ranger and then in special forces and like no way. has been in and like the, the entire he's had like 30 years now in the military, like full on deployments, like real deal, like full on soldier. And he was like a founding member of both like Nirvana. Are you and serious? Wow. Yeah. I've never heard of yeah. him. Dude. Fuck, that's yeah. wild. 
That was that's what I feel like LA's like now, like you were talking about all the people dying, how Seattle was during yeah, that grunge area. Totally. Like, you're constantly like, Oh, yeah. another dude's dead. Yeah. Who was your favorite band growing up, Jack? Tool. I'm a diehard oh, Tool rad. fan. Yeah. Yeah. I love Tool. Dead, like you'll never see a better live show than Tool. Dude, I saw them at fucking and I'm it's hard to believe. It's hard to fucking believe that anybody is that tight of a band. Yeah. I saw them at Coachella as well. Was that in ninety eight? Was it 98? I don't think it was that. I don't think we know. It could have been. It must have been after that. Okay. Maybe it was like 2002 or Okay. Something? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. It, it wasn't 98 because that's the year I got sober, yeah. so I, I wouldn't have my shit together. But I was like, oh, I, I couldn't fucking believe like, that that's what yeah. it's like. They're penetrating yeah. you know, when they're playing. Yeah. And that stuff's like. But I also saw your dad. I saw your dad's band play in Orange County. I don't, I don't think you were at that show. I saw your sister there. Orange County. Like at the. The Sabbath played. At oh, the, uh, the oh, um, yeah, the uh, uh, Irvine Meadows. Yes. Irvine Amphitheater. Were you at that? I was there, yeah, oh, but I, I got there see. super late because of traffic. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, but I was there and like, and that fucking show was extremely, t- I mean, yeah. granted, they've been doing it so long, but like. Yeah, I think they probably got it right by now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I will say though, they, because they hadn't really played together In for years. a while. Yeah. So it was, they, I, they, they were very, uh, very on it yeah it was you know, fucking when, wild when that last run dude we were maybe i did talk to you there i can't i because i saw shepherd there and yeah. your sister and i was there with um ah oh, fuck one of um i know you know i'm the i oh, oh uh uh alan um finn yeah yeah that's who i went with okay. alan yeah. yeah and um and i was like but here's the weirdest thing i don't know if you caught wind of this but so we go there right and we have we're backstage and all this shit and it's fucking pretty amazing but i go to go to the bathroom and if you go to Black Sabbath in L.A. It, it, and you're a dude, you're waiting, you know, like hours to fuck, you know, to get in the bathroom or whatever. There, there was never. a uh, Oh, sorry. Sorry. Vice versa. There's a long line for the women's up here. Yeah. That Orange County show was 99 percent dudes mm-hmm. and legit like metal dudes from like the 70s <laughs> yeah. and 80s. Dude, like, we we filmed. Uh, uh, man, where were we filming? I think we, we filmed something because we just did a I just did a documentary about my dad for A and E. Oh it's, right, yeah, it's, it's actually it's awesome. It's, did you uh, direct it? I uh, produced it. Oh, my awesome. company did it. Yeah, um, it's coming out I think in August. But oh, we cool. um, we were interviewing someone and it was a grandfather, his son, and his granddaughter at the show. And you're like, that's awesome. <laughs> it's it's amazing. like three generations. Yeah. Like that's that's rad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's Sabbath. Yeah, but that's like kind of the only band that can. Yeah, it's like that. The Stones, maybe. The Stones, maybe, yeah, I guess you know, so. maybe McCartney a little bit. A even little at the bit. height of, even at when I was listening to, almost exclusively like, new wave, like Joy Division, The Cure, New Order, like the very, very strict. You know how strict you are when yeah. you're at that a certain yeah that er, those teenage years. Yeah, it's like my shit. Don't fuck with my shit. Yeah. And uh and I don't listen to other shit. People my friends are listening to Van Halen and I was like, oh, man, well no. What are you talking? How can you be happy like that? <laughs> California girls, you gotta hear this shit here. People are dying, man. Robert Smith just sings how I feel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like yeah. the Smiths and shit. But I always have had ma- a copy of Masters of Reality. Yeah. It's oh, a great it's album. Just there. It's there. I mean it'll go years will go by, I won't listen to it, and then every once in a while I'll come back and be like Oh yeah, that's right. But I think Sabbath and the Stones are the only bands that have had that long multi generation. Oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, because yeah. I'm sure there's. You're right. There's generations that listen to the Beatles and whatnot, but nobody's seen them since the fucking '60s. Yeah, so exactly. Like, the um, have you have you seen the Cure play live recently? No, no, man. Honestly, the last time I saw them right? play oh, was dude. in I the s- '80s. I saw them at Lollapalooza a couple years ago. More than a couple, what, five, six years ago. Still great. Dude, it was like listening to the record. Yeah. Robert Smith is a fucking that dude's perfection when he sings. I was like, I there's no way that that dude's as old as he is. And and I'm like, is this to track? Is this is he? Nope, because you you could hear him take the breath sometimes. Really? Yeah. And wow. I was like, wow, dude, like that it, dude is that fucking band is incredible. Yeah. Yeah. The Cure. They played that one fucking festival in where was it in Pasadena, right? Last summer. Yeah, yeah. They did. yeah, and I fucking had tickets oh, and I dude. missed it. I, I like had a ticket, and, and that's like, ah. what he was playing like pornography and shit, right? Like yeah. there's those three in incre- there's 17 seconds, faith, yeah. and pornography, and then like Siamese 
bo- twins or whatever, or, 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 or dream, three imaginary right? no, was, bo- three was, imaginary boys or yeah. something like that. One of the one of the two, but but the three are that faith, seventeen seconds of pornography, and those were the those were the songs that were like early eighties. That's when I saw them. Yeah, you know, I was in college in the mid eighties, so I went and saw them there. And I think the last time I saw them was like 89, 88, yeah. 89. It was right around. It was when Disintegration came out. Okay, and then of course post disintegration i was like no way bro can't listen to this stuff. not legit not legit two half pictures of you my ass you're not sad enough well like i liked like the early depeche mode records yeah. and then i didn't really like them i loved the first few dude didn't the they, first few were fucking stunners they're phenomenal Bangers. didn't they come out with an album recently that was actually really good i you know it's I, i'm one of those terrible people yeah. like after you have a couple of shitters you yeah, know you like you two or something i'm like i'm yeah. not giving i was down that. when it was like sad gay goth dance music you know yeah. what i mean but as soon as dave uh kahan what's is that his yeah. name or something like that david kahan's a singer kahan, hmm. he, as soon as he started getting all sexy and yeah. singing about sexy shit and yeah. stuff looks in his eyes and the sexy times i was like bro you know that, <laughs> too happy, <laughs> too happy. I can't have it. You don't, you don't feel sexy when you're sad like that. You're gonna be sad. No, but you know how you were saying about the guy who started those band, uh, Nirvana and Pearl Jam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the guy? Okay, so fuck. What is that? There's a guy and, and he can rip a man from limb to limb. He was, the, he's, he was one of the founders of Depeche Mode. Mm-hmm. Then he was one of the founders. Then he was the dude in Yaz with Allison Moyet. Oh, wow. yeah. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. Then, he started the Bronski beat. Same yeah. fucking dude. Oh, wow. come on. This is terrible. Yes, that yeah. dude's amazing. And he was in. Same dude. Not And, and wow. also, was there some crossover to Pet Shop Boys as well? Maybe it's something? the Pet Shop Boys. No, and but not Bronski. Beat. I think it is Bronski beat. Yeah. yeah. Communards or whatever. Yeah, this. Yeah. Anyway, listen, we could go that way. Let's cut it. What a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming. Thank Thanks you. So Please much. come Thanks back. I would love, love to, to see you again. Yeah. And uh, and please hunt those ghosts. I will. And protect <laughs> us from that shit. Get I will try. I'll and don't bring any pack. of that shit here if you come here again. Too late. <laughs> but, too, or, late. Yeah. <laughs> too late. Yeah. 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 I'm like Chernobyl boy over here. It's just, you know, once you got it, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> well, like what about Jack's? Like, I feel like I brought something home. Right? <laughs> also, now the basement's kind of cold. <laughs> <laughs> Jack. Yeah. Thanks, Jack. Yeah. Hey, thank you guys yeah. a lot. Yeah. Thanks, thank man. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you guys at home for listening. Oh, and when does your show start again? Uh, it's it's uh, March 13th uh, on Travel Channel, cool. 10 p.m. Uh, and then it's just every Friday after that for like perfect weeks. Oh, yeah, awesome. Right. I look forward to it. All right, cool. Thanks. Right on. Thanks, like guys. and subscribe. Yeah, you lead it. Hey, Do what thanks. Charlie says so he doesn't yell at you again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Damn. I'm saying this under duress. I've been abused by my oppressor, Charlie Man Clark. But we're okay. We're getting <laughs> some food. I'll say it. Uh, Ow, Charlie. I'm saying it. <laughs> um, no, thanks for listening. Uh, follow us on It's All Bad on your favorite podcast platform. We got some gear dropping soon. Uh, also, you can email us with at it is all bad podcast at gmail dot com. That's right. Mm. Um, you want to be on the show if you want to yeah make, we're, we're going to be doing uh you dial in soon uh, uh teleconferencing so is it called teleconferencing are we it's 1976 <laughs> yeah. right we're in teleconferencing yeah, we got a teleconference yeah, so in, let me huh? call you on my car phone <laughs> i got it out in the 924 mike's got one of those telephones see <laughs> <laughs> no but but we're going to be doing that so that people can call in and uh, and we can talk to you, but we've had folks on the show who have been listeners, and we, uh, so so hit us up. Uh, hit us up. You know where we are. Mm-hmm. Get the butter. Get it mm. if you have it. It's gonna be buttery. Yeah. Get it. <laughs>